This is a warning to the citizens of Austin. Stay away from the university area. From what's considered by many the first recorded mass shooting in America almost 60 years ago, when 14 died at the University of Texas at Austin, to more recent events, a dozen gunned down in a Southern California bar, 12 shot in a Virginia Beach municipal building, and now Lewiston, Maine. A small pattern has emerged. People with a military background are overrepresented as mass shooters in our data. To be clear, we're talking about just a fraction of people with military backgrounds who become mass shooters. But that kind of nuance is what James Densley with the Violence Project tracks. It defines mass shootings as four or more people murdered in one event, not including the offender. Its data focuses on shootings in a public location, not part of an underlying crime. We actually have uh, 14 or 15 mass shooters in our database that were marksmen or snipers in the military. A CBS News analysis of the data shows about a quarter of mass shooters have military service or training. That's disproportionately high. Only 7% of the U.S. population, less than 1 in 10, has a military background. I think there's some skills that are learned in the military which may lend themselves then to mass shootings that follow. So for instance, proficiency with firearms. Does it surprise me that people who have that skill and expertise are overrepresented? No, it does not. Dr. Barbara Van Dalen speaks from experience. She's a clinical psychologist who has worked with the U.S. Department of Defense and veterans for decades and has testified before a Senate committee. Why are we seeing these numbers so skewed? It's complex. This is a very complicated set of factors, conditions, issues. And when it comes to mass shootings, there are certain people in our, our society who have more knowledge, more expertise. Army officials say leaders called the New York State Police during a training exercise in July concerned about Robert Card's mental state. Troopers took him to a hospital for evaluation. In case after case, shooters have had known mental health issues. The Justice Department settled a 2017 lawsuit by Sutherland Springs, Texas victims, claiming the Air Force was negligent when it didn't add information about that shooter to a national background check database. That would have prevented him from purchasing a gun from a licensed dealer. The Justice Department did not admit liability. The more information we can have earlier, the more information we can have to understand where people, how people get to the point where they start to feel these kinds of, of, of impulses, their hopelessness, um, just giving up, and what can help change that course so that it doesn't lead to something like this. What does lead someone to do this? Research by the Violence Project has identified common traits. Childhood trauma, later in life a personal crisis, leading to radicalization, and access to guns. While the gunman in Lewiston's life is still under investigation, his access to guns and his military background is already the focus of intense scrutiny. Again, it bears saying that the vast majority of people who serve in the military go on to lead incredibly successful lives. And obviously we're incredibly grateful for their service. And so this is not a case that joining the military turns you into a mass shooter. Stephen Stock, CBS News.